Amen. Well, this morning, amen, we're going to continue on into our series, amen. Uh, we are calling it, amen, the 20-year uh, anniversary series of Haggai, amen. Consider your ways, amen, which is, could be a theme for us to understand right now, especially going through, amen, the, the getting ready to go through the fourth quarter of the year of 2021. I don't know about you, but it's almost already over. Man, we just got through 2020. Now we're getting through 2021, and it's going to be 2022, just literally around the corner. So if you join with me, and then we're going to go to the second chapter of the book of Haggai. And uh, we're going to just continue on that understanding because in this portion of scripture, the Lord will tell us, amen, again, in that form, consider it. Amen. And what not so much as the beginning of the book of Haggai, where God said, consider your ways. Today, he's talking about consider it. Consider what? And we're going to look at that this morning. I want to give you two things, amen, this morning, as we're working out our faith and we're walking the walk of faith, amen. There's two points that we'll look at today is one, that we must be able to establish an understanding. And two, after we've established an understanding of God's principles and God's ways and God's covenant with us as his children, then we can turn around and produce an action. And so two words, understand and make. Amen. And what that make is, is to make the work to which God has called you a priority in your life. Amen. And so we're going to take this journey as Haggai, and we do once again just kind of look at a, just a, an overview of Haggai. Remember, the people of God had lived in bondage, all right? So some of us, amen, we have maybe never accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, or maybe we're that individual that gave our life to the Lord a long time ago, and once we used to go to church, once we used to follow God in, in, a, in a figure of speech, amen, like, you know, we served God, we used to go to church, we used to be part of a church, and then we straight away. Well, in that strain away, we live out a lifestyle. Can you say amen to that? We live out a mannerism of life. Amen. And so in that journey, amen, there are things that we've learned and there's habits that we've occupied our lives with. Amen. The way of life. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just the way nature actually works out in humanity. Amen. So if you think about the captivity that the people of God are dealing with here of hundreds and hundreds of years in Babylonian captivity, as I said on Wednesday, amen, in the message, amen, just like in the time of Nebuchadnezzar with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, amen, the servant of the Lord, they were drawn to, they were commanded and even ordered to follow the ways of the Babylonian way. Nebuchadnezzar would build a statue a, a carving golden image and tell the people that every time throughout the day they heard this trumpet blow, they were to stop in their tracks, bow down towards the temple, wherever it was at, and worship King Nebuchadnezzar. Worship King Nebuchadnezzar. Now, this is the reason why, if you've never heard this story, but in Daniel chapter 3, there's a story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego being thrown into the fiery furnace. How many of you ever been uh, ever felt like you've been thrown under the bus? Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Or somebody's ever, you know, backstabbed you. I know probably none of you guys, you guys are all <laughs> angels and everything else. But uh, if I drink that water, I, I feel like Swiss cheese, you know, like the cartoons, right? You know, the cartoons with Tom and Jerry and the Roadrunner. He drinks water and then it leaks out everywhere because he got shot up, you know what I mean? And so the reality is, amen. Uh, these individuals, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, under the discipleship of Daniel, the servant of the Lord, would not bow down. So as the trumpet blew, amen, as the music sounded, everybody would stop in their tracks, and they would bow down right where they were at, in the middle of the street, in the middle of the quad, in the middle of their, of their restaurants or their homes. They would bow down and just basically turn to the direction of the temple and begin to worship Nebuchadnezzar. Then there was these three guys that stayed standing. And people started to complain. Come on, somebody. Have you ever had anybody talk about you? 
Come on. Now I'll say this, if you've ever worked a job, you've gotten talked about. Amen. I don't care how perfect of an employee you are, there's always going to be a hater. Come on, somebody. There's always going to be somebody who wants to come against you. And if they've ever given the opportunity, like, hey, man, what do you think about that guy, Steve, you know? Oh, man, you know, he's a good guy, you know, but kind of slow, you know, he doesn't move fast enough. And so people will try to put in that little plug because they know if the boss is asking about another person, then maybe you should just not exonerate that person unless they get promoted above you. Come on, somebody. How many know that, that promotion or advancement by putting other people down is not advancement? Amen. All right? And so we see that in the kingdom of God. And so these three guys are they they they, they, they blow the whistle on them. Hey, Nick King, Nebuchadnezzar, those three dudes over there, they're 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 mocking you, man. They're they're coming against you because the, the horn, the trumpet blows, everybody stops in their tracks. And they all bow down to the towards wherever the temple is, wherever they're out in the city. But these three guys continue on, or they just look at us, and then they do their own thing. Come on, somebody. And so there's that been thrown into that fiery furnace, right? Because they would not bow down. So they were trying to keep to their ways of God. And when they were confronted by Nebuchadnezzar, they said, we will not bow down to anything that takes the place of God. Amen? So if you understand this, Babylonian ways were just like that. They had no reference to God. They had no recollection of God. They had no honor towards God. Now, why am I saying all this? Because in today's society, we live in a community of involvement where it is about me, myself, and I. How it benefits me, how it benefits my desires. And we know this, amen. If somebody today it has gotten so rampant and, 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 and so obvious that if you do not do what other people do uh, like or or you do something in a way that they do not like, they're going to let you know. Come on, somebody. Back in the way, we were a little bit more respectful. Come on, somebody. Amen. We would like, man, oh, that's if they want to live like that, that's their life. They can choose that. But today. If you do not go by the ways of others, and I want to say this, and I'll say this very carefully, whatever processes or thoughts and desires are the majority or the dominating, if you go against that, be prepared to get roasted. Come on, somebody. No different at work. Amen. Right now, amen, we're seeing it even more and more. And we look at these things, amen, that are going on, amen, whether it's political, whether it's religious, whether it's just socially, amen. And I'm, not, like, I'm thinking about Sister Penny, amen, that, you know, you're going to go to a baseball game, you know, somebody uh, invited me to go to a game. I think somebody else invited us the other day, or Brother, a uh, uh, Brother Steve, I threw him under the bus. And he'll go with you. <laughs> and Pastor, you want to go to guys? No, but Steve will go. <laughs> And then, you know, really, it's because of Josh. You know, I don't know how Josh will do in a stadium. You know, that's a lot of people. It's, you know, he might be like, well, look at all these people, you know. But the reality is, too, I also know, too, that you have to be vaccinated. You have to have that vaccination or produce them a test, right? Now, that's the, the, the out order. But the thing about it is now is that I don't know how they're going to do that. Now, there's pharmacies you can go in there and get the test. You can buy a, a, a test on your own. So go get a test, and you can do it like every 30 days, and you can show them, look, I bought this. Here's my receipt. I took the test. I'm not positive COVID, right? So there's places that either want full vaccination or a proven test that you're not COVID. Come on, somebody. And so I threw Brother Steve under the foot. I'm like, he'll go with you. He'll get the shot. <laughs> amen? <laughs> but the reality is, amen, if you do not agree with the, what, what the world is doing today, They'll come against you, man. And I'll tell you, it doesn't matter. And if you put yourself out there, if you're at work, all you have to do is start and strike a conversation in the break room, and you'll begin to see where everybody stands. Come on, somebody. Well, this is what was happening with Haggai. He was trying to get the people reacquainted with God. Amen. So I'll say this in safe, in safety or in a safe manner, that if any of us 
have lived a time away from God. And we've lived seasons away from God. And what I mean by seasons is that we go through those seasons of being up in the valley, right? Everything's good. Amen. Everything's perfect. Amen. Even the dog and the cat is acting good. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Where everything's perfect in those seasons, amen, maybe you're running to the church and worshiping God because how good it is, amen? But in normalcy, when we're doing good, we tend to forget about God. Come on, somebody. And when we're going through that bad situation, come on, somebody, when we're going through that trial or that tribulation or that suffering, then we find ourselves right back at that place with God. And this portion of scripture today that we're looking at it's exactly what God is beginning through Haggai to remind the people of how far they've come. And that's why he says, consider it. Consider what? Consider how far I brought you. Come on, somebody. And after 70 years of captivity in Babylon, the children of Judah returned to Jerusalem. And the first thing that they did, and we've learned this in the first session of this, the first thing, after 70 years of captivity, they've lived under bondage for 70 years. Now they're released. Now they're returning back to their homeland. Come on. The very first thing that they do is they go home and take up and rush to the task of rebuilding their own houses. Now it's not that it's bad for you to take care of your house or to buy a house or to remodel your house or to redo your landscape. That's not the problem. There's nothing wrong with that. Come on, somebody. Because it's your investment, right? You buy a house, and maybe there's weeds everywhere. And then you take out all the grass you buy. You pay the extra money. You put sod, and you put block, and you put new concrete and all that. You paint the house. All you're doing is in, in, in increasing your investment. And God talks to us about being stewards of what he blesses us with, right? So you buy a house for 80000 You put 50000 into it. Now you got a house worth 300000 right? That's not bad. That's actually being good with what God has given you. But the problem, I want you to catch it. They were in slavery. They were in bondage for 70 years. And now they are released from that and returned home. Come on. It's like being in the hospital, right? Or being away. Like for myself, I've been away for, you know, a few years, you know, in the military. What do you do when you first get home? Right? For people that have ever been in prison. What is the first thing that they do when they get home? Come on, somebody. And so that's the point. What happened here is that they were at this place where they're returning after all this bondage. And now they're coming to this place where they're returning home. And now the very first thing that they rush to do is start building their own homes. They don't rush to church. They don't rush to thank God. Now, you got to understand it was different than us today, man. We can get on a phone call, or we can get on a, 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 a cell phone or a tablet, and we can get on the Internet, and we can reach out and let somebody know, hey, man, thank you for your prayers, or thank you for this. If it wasn't for those technology, you would have to go to everybody's house and let them know. And this is what's happening with the people. And that's why God says, through Haggai, in the beginning of this series, he says, you say it's not time to take care of the house of God. But you run home to your panel houses. And you got to remember this. If anything, if anything, where we're at today is only because of God. Where we're at today is only because of God. When you survive a sickness, when you survive a setback. Come on, in 2020, many people couldn't go to work. Many people have lost their jobs and even lost vehicles. And lost certain things because they could not afford the payments that they were so accompanied to making every month because of work. Amen? Maybe you've been injured. Maybe you've lost something. And we see ourselves today getting through those times. And I want you to know this, amen, because this has been the push in the last few months of 2021. We're out of pandemic. We've been restricted from coming to church. Now we're back and able to go to church, come back, right? But what's the first thing people are doing? They're returning back to those ways that satisfy themselves. Like, and, and, uh, and we're not picking on you guys because you're going to the baseball game. <laughs> right? But, right? 
Like my dad called me the other day, yeah, we get to go back to the game. I'm like, yeah, dad, but you got to get to go. Oh, I got the shot. I'll get the shot for that. <laughs> okay. Go with the old years. You know? I praise the Lord, right? And so the reality is, like, I would drive around with my dad, and my dad would say many times, man, you know what? I, I got to sit down and eat somewhere. I'm like, I'd rather not eat nowhere. I'll just eat in the car. You know what I mean? But see what I'm saying? Now that we're getting back to those things, those first things that we're doing, we're sending our kids back to school. We're going back to work. We're going back to amusement parks. We're going back to eating in restaurants. We're going back to eating at and going out to bars at night, to movie theaters. Come on, somebody. First thing everybody runs back is back to the gyms. Right now, if you want workout equipment, go online, go to offer up. Everything's for sale because everybody's back at the gym. You want a good deal on the treadmill and some weights. Amen. They're cheap right now in offer up. Amen. Because everybody's returning back to the gyms. And now we got entertainment, right? Football games and baseball games and basketball games and all these other things. But we have not returned back to the Lord. And I want to say this with passion and compassion. That for those that will listen and watch this video later, amen, it is like the enemy, just like in the people that we're reading out about today, God's people, bad guy, the prophet of the Lord was always reaching out to them to get them back to the place where God had solved them to be. Amen. And so as the pastor of the church, I become that person. I become that prophet to say, let's not just worry about our own. Remember, we're getting to 2022. And the only way we'll be able to say Happy New Year is because God saw us through. Come on, somebody. Not EDD. Not President Biden. Come on. Not the Biden administration. Not Feinstein or Pelosi for Californians. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's why I don't do it live because I'd have been blocked out by now. Come on, somebody. I'd have been turned off. Amen. But the reality is, it's because of God. But just like the people here, they were not considering that. Amen. Haggai chapter 2, verse 15. The Bible says this. And now carefully consider from this day forward. From before the stone was laid upon the stone in the temple of the Lord. Since those days, when one came to a heap of 20 ephods, there were but 10. When one came to, to the wine vat to draw out 50 baths from the press, there were but 20. Verse 17, I struck you with light and mildew and hail in all the labors of your hands. Yet you did not turn to me, says the Lord. Verse 18. Consider now from this day forward, from the 24th day of the ninth month, from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Verse 19. Is the seed still in the barn? As yet the vine, the fig tree, the pomegranate, and the olive tree have yet yielded fruit. But from this day, I will bless you. Amen? From this day, I will bless you. Now, what is this talking about? This talking about, amen, first and foremost, that word temple in verse 15 is the word hekah, which comes from uh, Strong's 1964, which means an edifice, a citadel, a tabernacle, or a sanctuary. He's saying, listen, remember, consider this. At this moment, God's asking them to look backwards. He's not telling them to look back, but he's telling them to look backwards. I was watching uh, uh, this, this uh, I don't know what it is. It's like a YouTube short. But there was this lady that was training to run. And she's actually on the treadmill running backwards. Like, you know, not running forward on the treadmill, you know what I mean? She's actually running backwards. And man, the machine's going and the coach is watching her. She's standing on the end and she's like, and then she jumps on it and she's like, whoa, backwards. And I'm like, dude, that's sick. <laughs> and I mean like fast, like back, but her legs are going backwards. She's literally running backwards. 
So God's not asking you to run back. He's not asking you to turn back. He's not even asking you to look back. What he's saying is look backward. What that means is he is going to take you forward, but you're looking backward. And I want you to understand that. What's the first thing you do when you walk backwards? You look, right? Because what are you afraid of? Falling. And so why he says that, consider this. He says, consider it. Consider from before the stone of the temple being loaded. He said, remember, look, 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 just if you look backwards, you'll remember how far you're going and everything that I saw you through. But you're going to have to trust me because you can't see where you're going. Oh, come on, somebody. And it's always about a trust factor. If I've been saying anything, that we trusted God for 20 years, that a young couple with, with two young babies in the home, amen, we opened up the doors to the church, and God said, this is where I want you. We didn't know. We we're looking backwards, amen, like the boat's weaving, and we're leaving the land, and the land's getting shorter and further and smaller, and you know that you're no longer able to reach where you're leaving from. Come on, somebody. And, and the reality is, amen, everywhere you're going, you're in the hands of somebody else, amen. If you've ever been in an airplane, you're in the hands of the pilot. If you've ever been on a cruise, you're at the hands of the crew. Come on, somebody. While you're asleep, you're trusting them to keep you alive. And if you watch the Titanic, God help you. Come on, because there are people that fall asleep on the watch. Come on, somebody. Amen. But the reality is you're trusting them. Amen. Just like on an Uber, right? You're going to you know, take an Uber, you take a lift, or, or, or you take a taxi, right? You get on the bus, you're... You're doing work. You're on the train. I don't know if you watched this, amen, but there was a, a derailment out there. I think out there, like in Minnesota somewhere, there was a derailment. There are people that are injured on an Amtrak train that derailed, amen. You're asleep, and the train is going, and you're trusting the locomotive engineer, amen, and something happened. And all of a sudden, they're tossing and turning and flipping and rolling. Come on, somebody. And so every time we do that, even as a pastor, maybe you're the spouse or you're the wife or you're the husband or even the children, they get in the back seat of the car and they trust mom and dad to be paying attention. They're playing their video games, they're taking a nap, amen, and they're trusting the driver. I don't know about you, but that's a huge trust, amen? That's a huge trust, amen, to trust somebody with your life in that way. But God tells them, look backward, look and consider it. Consider how far I brought you. And what he's referencing, he says, listen, and he says it even in himself through that guy. He says, hey, man, in verse 17, he says, I struck you. I want you to hear that word. I struck you with blight and mildew. Come on, somebody. How many like mildew? Says, no, right? That's my favorite house. I like to buy the glad mildew scent, you know, like Monsters Incorporated. You ever seen that cartoon, Monsters Incorporated? Yeah. Hey, can I borrow some deodorant? Yeah, what do you got? I got stinky dog, wet dog, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> can I borrow some air freshener? Yeah, I got I got musty and I got mildew. Which one do you want? Oh, I won't take mildew. <laughs> no, but he says I've struck you with blight, amen. What is blight, amen? Ruin. He says I've struck you with decay. You ever, you know, I don't know about you, but I pay attention. When you're driving down the street and you see businesses shut down and houses empty and vacant. I think I was dropping up my dad a couple of weeks ago, amen, and I'm dropping him off and I'm driving down to the community of Ontario on the upper side, amen, and I'm seeing houses on the corner that are empty. People are painting them. And I'm not looking at like, oh, man, good, that's a house to buy. I'm thinking about the family that no longer lives there, the family that may have been evicted. Or even this, the house is empty because somebody passed away. Come on, somebody. Amen. Car lots filled with cars because people have had to sell their vehicles for the fact of the matter that it broke down on them. Come on. But see, he says that, yeah, I, I hit you, I struck you with blight and mildew and hail and all the labor of your hands. I was watching another YouTube short. It was, it was raining, it was hailing, it was a thunderstorm. And an Asian guy grabs a tinfoil. Uh, uh, like a tray you would be fighting for like Thanksgiving and he's trying to run to the car and he, he walks out and he, he runs and everybody's looking at him like dude you're going in the rain like that as soon as he turns the corner you just hear Pah! and everybody starts screaming got struck by lightning come on somebody you're trying to 
survive, right? You ever felt like that? You're trying to make things happen and then zap, you get zapped. And everything goes loose, right? You don't like that with your car, right? I know I did. In the last couple of weeks, it's like if it wasn't broken here, it was broken there. If it wasn't that part, it was this part. Come on. Have you ever felt that way? The reality is, is that God says consider it. Consider what? That he's going to see you through those moments. He's going to see you through those times. And I don't know about you. I'm walking backwards. I don't know what's going to happen the third, the fourth quarter this year. Amen? I don't know what's going to happen in 2022. But I can tell you this. I'm walking backwards. I'm looking backwards. I'm going forward, but I'm remembering how far God has brought me. Can you say amen? This November will be celebrating three years that my wife passed away. And because I'm looking backwards, I'm like, God, it's been three years already. It just seems like yesterday. But you brought us that far. Come on, somebody. When you think about all these National Grandparents Days and National Sundays and National Daughters Days, we think back, amen, God, I remember these things, and look how far you brought us. When our kids have been just little babies, amen, and today they're grown-up mothers and fathers today doing the same thing you did for them. I, I'm blessed when I hear you talking about your kids, and they have their own kids and everything else, and you know, I think about that, amen, like you were sharing it, you're, you know, can you pick up this grandson, can you do this, can you help out here, grandpa, I saw Brother Steve sitting over there, and I saw your daughter running over, and I go, see, that's the spirit of a grandpa, she used to look down and go, look, he's old, <laughs> Sister, right? you know what I'm saying, but you, you, you sense the spirit of a grandpa, come on, because you're a grandpa, right, a few times over, I'm not a grandpa, I'm still young, <laughs> right but you get what i'm saying right so the reality is you see these things and, and here's the blessing that brother steve and i sit around and we talk i remember there's times they go you know i remember and i go yeah bro i was there i can testify god seen you from that storm to another storm to glory come on somebody when i hear sister penny sharing with brother steve today about her health condition and everything i remember the days when there was no movement in her life. And we were reaching out because she couldn't get out of bed. But today I see her getting, I open up the door this morning to throw a trash. I open up the door and then she was getting out of her car. And I'm like, my God, look at this. And you, you may not understand that, but I see her in the back seat pulling out stuff. And, and I'm like, my, I want to stop and cry. I want to drop to my knees. But instead of worshiping Nebuchadnezzar, I'm considering God because I remember. I remember, no, I came for you, bro. You just had song this morning. You? <laughs> Amen. Well, you said, I remember, I remember those moments and those moments and those days when my wife and I were crying, crying out to God and pouring our heart out. Thank God we need a miracle for Sister Betty. Yes. Yes. Look at her today. Putting around, bro. Getting around, Amen. And all these things, see, that's what God wants us to do. But here's the point. The point is not just don't remember that. But what he's saying is to the people of God, he says, from this day forward, I'm going to bless you. Isn't that like God? He says, look, I don't care what you forgot to consider. I don't care how far you've been away from me. I don't care how many years you've been under bondage and you've been living under that roof and acting like them. Come on, somebody. Hello? For some of us, it'd be no different. We gave our life to the Lord years ago, months ago, amen, and weeks ago, amen. And the reality is we left God from that moment and we've gone back to living those former ways. For some of us, we've been living in the world and living the worldly lifestyle, for lack of better word. What is that? We just get up and think about our own self, right? For me, it's a cup of coffee. What are you going to do today? I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to do this. And the weeks go in. The weeks come by. And next thing you know it, it's Christmas time. Oh, God, get to church. <laughs> And have been there in a long time, right? And that's the reason why. What God is saying is that if you, if you can consider it, you'll understand this. Put God first. Remember, I said two things, right? Understand and 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 make it. Make it work. Make what work? God's plan for your life. And you say amen. He says, from this day forward, I will bless you. And I want you to understand that God wants to bless you. And I believe that from this day forward, we can see the condition of the church today, but I'm still looking to that I am going to bless you from this day forward. Because why is that? Tomorrow is going to be another day. Next month is going to be, and next year is going to be from this year forward, from this month forward, from this week forward, from this day forward, 
God is going to bless you. Amen. If you can only consider how far he has brought you. you say amen, amen to that. When we think about this, amen, every generation of God's people faces the same challenges. I want you to understand this. They may be different. We may be fighting a different animal in a different situation. But we all face the similar challenges. To seek first the things of God and then to trust him to provide everything needed for life and faith. Come on, somebody. Right. But trust God. Sister Penny, like you were saying, amen, I looked it up real quick, and you're right. I, I, I Actually, I've been following the, the containers off the coast. But how I many you know we're already, right, and, I, and I, I looked up, and I, I remembered, I didn't remember when you said it, but, but Costco did make an announcement that they were going to start breaking down bulky items and making small packages and limiting the sales of it because of the container out of the port of LA, the port of Long Beach. Amen. And the reality is, here we go again. Shortages at the worst time of the year, Thanksgiving. Come on, somebody, tamales. And we're gonna have, to, to, you know, we're gonna have a, a toilet paper shortages and everything else again. Water shortages. All these things. Here we go again. What is it gonna remind us? People again are gonna be hit with that blight. Come on, somebody, with that mildew. Come on, with those situations. But he says, you refuse to turn to me. I believe that, amen. I don't know about you, but I'm just like that naive Christian, amen, that believes everything in the Bible. And I can tell you this thing. During the 2020 pandemic, the only thing I could and only was able to do was trust God for that. My son and I got COVID in the very beginning of January, early February. And I felt like I was dying. And I was like just putting my hand out the church, man, trying to pull in a bowl of soup. Come on, somebody. But man, I, 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 was, I, I was holding on to God. I didn't know how God was going to get me through the next day. You got to understand this. For me, I have my son who's just running around, amen? And I begin to think, man, God, just whatever you do, I'll deal with the sickness. Just help my breathing. And I remember when the news started to hit that when you get COVID, you can't breathe. Come on, somebody. And I felt like I was dying. Now, my son had it first, but that young whippersnapper, amen, he bounced back after like a week and a half. He was, But I knew he was still out of it. Then I got sick. And I remember laying in the office, amen, because I got an elderly, you know, 84-year-old aunt and an 82-year-old uh, uncle at the house. And I'm like, man, I can't expose them. So we were, we were, you know, bunkering in here at the church, man. Sister, you know, Sister Sylvia, Sister Penny, Brother Angel, uh, 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 who else? Uh, Sister Esther, bring me bowls of soup. And I just crack open the door. It looked like that little, that little, <laughs> that little you know, what do they call that? Uh, the little, the, 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 the monster underneath the bridge, what do they call it? The gnomes. Huh? The gnomes. The gnomes, you know, underneath the bridge, you know. And I'm there just hand coming out the door. Sliding, sliding the pot. I was too weak. I couldn't lift it up. Sister Penny brought me, the, and Angel brought me this big old red tub full of stuff. I mean, man, it was like I was pulling a cart. <laughs> just trying to drag it in. Amen. I remember Sister Esther's little blue pot, amen. That little, you know, uh, the little, you know, the blue uh, manila pot. Yeah, and then here you, you just hear it sliding. I'm glad you've seen it because my dad swears that I have that pot. <laughs> the blue one? Yes. I, I still got it. it. Then you have it. He I keeps still, blaming me every day. I still got it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be honest, you see, it's, it's certain things. I still got that red tub. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'm telling you this. As I look at those things, I remember. I consider it. Man, God, you saw me through. You can go tell one. <laughs> I told you, Dad. I just got it. <laughs> yes, I found it. <laughs> yes, I still have it. Consider that we look at everything that God brought us through, and we think about the challenge that that Haggai is dealing with you and I, and every other, every one of us every year, is that we put God first. If we can understand that, we'll trust Him that He'll see us and provide for us everything else that is needed. The economy of God's kingdom is very different from the world economy. Come on, somebody. The world economy, you got to you got to go out there and get it. Come on, God's economy. You got to give it to God. 
and then he provides it. Come on, somebody. It's called it in a way of favor. Come on. I don't know about you, but I don't want to have to negotiate. I want to be able to walk in this situation and already immediately have favor. Come on, somebody. Because I give it to God first, I got favor. When I trust God first, I got favor. I walk into wherever I got to go. I'm not arguing with people. I'm not I'm not fighting with people, amen. I just get favor. Come on, somebody. We saw that the other day. I went to Bass Pro Shop, amen. I did a little, little uh, Facebook story, man. I love curbside. I have to deal with people. Come on, somebody. I have to stand in line, amen. But because I put God first, amen, I go in there and I get treated like a king, like I'm somebody. I walk up to the top thing. I'm the first one in line. Come on over here, man. Garcia. Yeah, come here. Everybody's looking like, who's that dude? Oh. I'm just that guy, man, you know? And they're looking at me like, wait, man, we've been standing in line. I go to the front counter. I'm in and out. I don't even pay. They're like, man, I want that. But they don't realize I order. But, but see, I get favor. Come on, somebody. Favor from God. And the reality is our, the economy of God is different than the world economy. When we seek to satisfy our own desires first, we will be in want. And that's the greatest thing. When we try to go out and get it on our own, get it to win it, then we'll always be in want. Come on, somebody. And I want you to understand this, amen. You ever been in a place where you just are not hungry? Amen. You don't need to do anything. You say, what do you feel like doing? Nothing. I just feel like this is chill. Let's just kick back. Well, don't you got to go do something? Don't you want to get? No, I'm actually satisfied somehow. Hello, somebody. But when we're out there trying to get it on our own, it just seems like it never satisfied that thirst or satisfied that desire, amen? But when we give our first to God and our best to God, then we have an abundance for every good work, amen? And I want you to understand this because I'm going to just close with this scripture in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, you can go there, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. I'm going to read out of the Message Bible, and I'm going to read uh, starting in verse 6. We like verse 8, but our key verse is verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 says this, verse 6. Remember a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. I want you to think about that. Okay? What does it mean by stingy? If you know, and I want you to understand this, when you're planting, there's a certain process of planting. We're talking about organic, right? And the process of, of building organic, right? It takes years. And just because you don't use pesticides and everything else, you can't call them organic. You have to uh, chelate the, the soil. You got to dig it out, plant it, throw it away, dig it out again, replant it, resoil it. Yeah, and you, it's almost like a uh, like a nine to twelve year process. You get all the oils and minerals out of the dirt. You can't just put good green dirt on the top and call it organic. It's a process, right? But if you should be putting four seeds in a pot or uh, in a pod, right? If you dig a hole and you put four seeds, right? You go again, you dig a hole and you put four seeds. If you're stingy, well, I know I'm supposed to put four seeds, but I'm just going to put one. Don't have to buy that many seeds, right? <laughs> exactly. What is he saying? Whatever you put into it, what you're going to get out. And that's why the scripture in 2 Corinthians 8, a stingy planter will have a stingy harvest. What does that mean? That the harvest is going to be stingy in what it gives you. Come on, somebody. And the reality is that's what happens with God. When we put God first and give God our best, then we don't have want. Come on, somebody. We don't have want. We're almost like trying to shove a, a, a water down our throat because we're really not thirsty. But aren't you thirsty? No, I'm actually, that water did me good. Come on, somebody. Wouldn't you like that? Instead of, oh, man, I drink one water, two waters, a soda, you know, juice. And everything. You ever been at that place? I hate those days, man. I go through like a sweet tea, a Pellegrino water, a Coke, a Rockstar, a coffee, two bottles of water. I'm like, man, I'm so thirsty. And I believe those moments are there to help us understand when you are in want. Come on, somebody. You ever ate something and you're just so hungry? Like you're just so hungry? I have had like bean and cheese burritos for like the last three days from Alberto. <laughs> by want, not by force. 
Brother Steve, he hit me up, man, and thank God for him. He hit me up with hey, Pastor, I'm going right past the church. You want something? Yeah, I've gone another peanut chip burrito. And he probably said, man, you just had that yesterday. But man, they're great. They're good. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't want steak. I didn't want food. I didn't want, I just wanted bean and cheese. Because for me, making a pot of beans, it goes to waste. So for the last three days, I've had bean and cheese burritos. I'm like, man, that's a good pot of beans right there. Amen. If you plant stingy, you're going to harvest stingy. That's right. what God's saying. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. If you're stingy with your seed, if you're stingy with your water, I know I should, you know, put 15 gallons of water in this one spot, but I'm only going to put three. And guess what? You're going to get the equivalent of a harvest out of that. But if you're lavish, come on. And I want you to understand this. If you give God your all, then God will give you his all. And I want you to know something. His all is eternity. Come on, somebody. His all is unmeasurable. It's unfathomable. Amen. Come on, somebody. And I believe that even to this day. Now, don't the, we get hit with blight. We get hit with mildew. We get hit with all these other things. Amen. But it's still God showing you. Didn't I get you through it, though? Come on. You trusted me and I got you through it. I remember Brother Steve man being sick, man, for that whole month. And looking at my son and just having the favor of God in my son. He sat up, he looked at me, and I'm like, oh, man, he's going to be up. And I'm telling you, I was dying, man. I was I was hurting. I could deal with pain. I could deal with pain all the time. Amen? Pain is, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't affect me. And I was hurting. And I thought about, man, if that kid has to get up and run around, dude, I, I, what am I going to do? So I remember looking at me, looked at me, and go like that, and I go like that, and he laid back down. And we literally slept for weeks. He looked up, he knew I was sick, he threw his blanket back over his head, go back to sleep. This is God's favor, man. God's favor. Amen. To each of us, Take plenty of time to think it over, is what the scripture says in verse 6 and 7. And make up your own mind what you will give to God. See, we'll say to God, well, God, I'm only going to give you this day, or I'm only going to give you this hour, or I'm only going to give you this time. It's up to us to make that decision. Come on, somebody. And that will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting later. I'm reading out of the Message Bible. You might be, you might be reading through a different channel. Where did you get that from? I'm reading from the Message Bible. Amen. Yeah. Close your parents and read off this. Yeah. Yeah. All right, verses six and seven, Second Corinthians chapter nine. All right, so we're right where it says, uh, I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind what you will give that will protect you against sob stories and harm twisting. What does that mean? Later on, you're not going to sob to God. Oh, God, why didn't you do this? Right? He's going to say, hey, man, you, that was your decision. You wanted a life where you just gave me one day a week or one hour a month. You know what I'm saying? For two days, of, uh, two two holidays a year. That's what you sold. That's what you are reaping. Come on, somebody. He says it will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. Like God says, you are get to church. See, that's why you're suffering. Oh my God, I gotta get to church, man. No, God don't want you to say, "Okay, uncle." Remember that? <laughs> say uncle, right? Say uncle, uncle, right? God don't want you to say that. What he wants you to do, as we were sharing during the prayer time, he just wants you to come to him and tell him, I love you, God. And you have been faithful to the end, God. And with that, God, I will praise you and worship you. Come on, somebody. And I'll tell you this. If you sow that investment in God, man, and trust him for everything else, he will give you his best. And you say amen. God loves it. When the giver delights in giving, I delight in giving God my life. Oh, I know I wanted to call in sick this morning because that's my flesh. I, I, 
I, I, I share those moments because I'm human just like you. When people say, well, man, Pastor, you, you hate coming to church. No, my flesh hates it. Come on, somebody. My flesh don't get them go, hey, woo, I want to read the Bible. Woo. No, my flesh goes, oh, man, you don't have to read the Bible. Watch Spider-Man. <laughs> Come on, you know, you watched it already 15 times, and your flesh is telling you, watch it again. Watch it again. You already seen it. Batman, the Dark Knight. Come on, somebody. And the reality is, I'm sharing that because, see, when you see me serving God or leading the church, it's because the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. The spirit is willing. Come on. So what is that? This is what happens when you allow the spirit to overcome your flesh. Come on, somebody. Look at 8 through 11. God can pour on his, the blessings in astonishing ways. Come on. So that you are ready for anything and everything. That's why we were said on Wednesday. He's preparing you for his blessings. Come on. Yes, and you will be ready for anything and everything. More than just ready to do what needs to be done. Come on. You know that. Amen. You don't want somebody just to do what is necessary. Come on. Right. I was thinking about that when you were sharing about somebody in your, one of your relatives. When they're doing this. They're making deliveries. They're picking up. And somebody said. You know, they don't, they let somebody out do it. You say, well, she's just going above and beyond. Come on, think about it. Don't you love when people go above and beyond? Come on. I was watching another YouTube short where a guy went through a, a regular car wash. He goes, I'm going to try a different lane. He went in, and the seats were still in vacuum. He's paying $50 for a car wash, and the seats are still in vacuum. The last time I took the car to get washed, I, the same thing happened. I came out and this thing wasn't even wiped down. I said, I'm not going to do this again. Come on, somebody. You want people to go above and beyond? I don't want to be that man yelling, oh, come on, clean it again and get everything up. But you can tell, amen, when somebody's going beyond and above. Come on, somebody. Verse, uh, <clears throat> the Bible says, amen, in verse 8 and 11, can pour out the blessing in astonishing ways that you're ready for anything and everything, more than just ready to do what needs to be done. As one psalmist put it, he throws caution to the wind, getting, giving to the needy and reckless abandon. His right living, his right giving ways, never run out, never wear out. Come on, somebody. The most generous God who gives seed to the farmer that becomes bread for your meals is more than extravagant with you. He gives you something you can then give away. Come on, somebody. Which grows into full form lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. Come on, somebody. When people say, how are you doing this? Why are you doing it? Because God has been faithful to me. Come on, somebody. Verse 12 through verse 15, carrying out this social relief work involves far more than helping meet the bare needs of poor Christians. It's also producing abundant and bountiful thanksgiving to God. This relief offering is a prod to life at, the, at your very best. Showing your gratitude to God by being openly obedient to the plain meaning of the message of Christ. Come on, somebody. The plain meaning. No salsa, no crema, no nothing, no avocado, no guacamole, no nothing. Just the plain message of Christ. No greater than this love than one who laid down his life for Christ. The fact that you can even bless somebody who's in need is because God is blessing you. Come on, somebody. Right. Not just talking about it, but walking about it. Come on, somebody. Amen. Many people say, I'm going to do this. Oh, God's going to do this. Oh, I'm going to do this. God's getting ready to know. The reality is, when you're able to say, God has done it. Come yes, on, somebody. Yeah. God has blessed me yeah. so I can bless somebody else. Yeah. I, God has given to me so I can give to somebody else. And yeah. it doesn't have to be in this flamboyant, extravagant way. Come on, somebody. Sometimes just giving a simple bottle of water and, 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 and a corn dog. Come on, somebody. They have nothing. They have nothing. Then I got corn dogs inside the freezer today, and I stack them up. Why? Because I, I know there's going to be somebody in need. Somebody's going to come tonight and say, Pastor, you got any meal? No, we're not having a meal. But I got a corn dog, and I got a bottle of water. Amen? Why? Because God has blessed us. Because God has taken care of this house. And you say amen. We see this, amen? It goes on to say amen. This relief offering is a, a product of life that you're very best showing the gratitude to God by being openly obedient to the plain meaning of the message of Christ. You show your gratitude through your generous offerings to your needy brothers and sisters 
and really towards everyone. Meanwhile, moved by the extravagance of God in your lives, they'll respond by praying for you in passionate intercession or whatever you need. Thank God for this gift and gift and no language can praise it. Come on, somebody. They'll be praying for you. Oh, man. I'm, I'll tell you this, amen. I, there ain't nothing better when I see the homeless praying for me. Come on, somebody. I take out the dog at 1 o'clock in the morning. And the homeless will be sitting there. Pastor, we just prayed for you. The other day you were here. They asked for a Bible, right? Came in here, got a Bible, gave it to them. And I said, man, pray for me. Oh, Pastor, we've always prayed for you. Come on, somebody. That's what I'm talking about. Why? Because, man, they got nothing. And so everything to them is a prayer. Come on, somebody. Woo! You get that? Yeah. Because you're a blessing. Then they want to find a, a grave and a reason to bless you. Closing mm -hmm. scripture, Matthew chapter 6. We're going to begin to read in verse 27 and 29. Has anyone busting in front of the mirror ever gotten taller? So much as an inch? All this time, the money wasted on fashion. Do you think it makes them that much of a difference? You see that up there? Mm -hmm. Instead of looking at the fashion, walk out into the fields and look at the wildflowers. Come on, somebody. I mean, we got to spend time doing that. Spend time looking at the wildflowers. They never print or shop, but have you ever seen color and design quite like it? The 10 best dressed men and women in the country look shabby alongside them. Come on, somebody. Verses 30 to verses 33. If God gives such attention to the parents of wildflowers, much of which are never even seen, don't you think he'll attend to you? Take pride in you. Do his best for you. And what I'm trying to do here is to get you to relax. Turn around tell your neighbor. Relax. relax. Come on. Turn around tell somebody. Relax. When you hear about people, man, and I'm going to share this with you. As long as you're giving God your first, then you'll always be talking about how you can't handle what God is doing. Come on, somebody. When somebody's not giving God their first or their best, they're always talking about what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, and planning out when they're going to do it. Come on, somebody. Oh, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to buy this, or I'm going to end up doing this. And oh, when God does it. Let me tell you something. There was a time in my life when I first got, was getting hired with the fire department. My daughter was only like maybe about a month, month and a half old, and I'm sitting there, I'm doing push-ups in the in the in the room, and I'm getting mad. I'm like, oh God, you're gonna let me get this fireman job. And I'm only I'm gonna I only have to work 20 days a, a month, and, and man, the other, you know, the, the 10 days a month, the other 20 days I'm gonna give them to you, 10 days for me, 10 for the church. And I'm sitting there doing push-ups, and my wife's in the kitchen, and, and she's still on maternity leave, and, and I'm doing my push-ups, and the Lord says, Liar. That's all he talks to me. Straight up. Liar. I'm praying and doing push-ups at the same time. God says, just pray, man. So you're trying to work everything else for your benefit and with me. So you're doing push-ups and you're praying. So I'm not telling you to sin, but God wants my full attention. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing push-ups with God. I'm doing push-ups for my fireman position and all these other things. And when you give me this, I'm going to give you 10 days a month. I'm just going to Live at the church. And I'm going to give my time all to my pastor. And, and, and I'll serve my pastor. And I'll do all these things. And I realized that they was just talk. And the Holy Spirit said, liar. He says, man, you get two weekends off. Of, you get two days off of every week on a weekend. You can't even give me two hours. How are you going to give me ten days? Come on, somebody. I told the Lord, hey, man, look, man, you're going to increase my income. And I'm going to tie you. God says, man, you can't even give me a dollar an hour. You're going to give me a hundred dollars a day. Come on, somebody. That's what he meant, liar. Because if you can't do it now, oh, come on, somebody. If you're trying to say that you're going to do it when you get big, it's going to be harder. Come on, somebody. Hello? Come on. If you can't do it when you're small, hello? When you ain't got nothing, how I many you know it's going to be harder when you got something? Come on, somebody. Oh, I'm gonna give a, 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 a you know a burrito to the homeless. But once you can, once I can afford ten burritos, like the ten pack of that Burger King or, or, or Taco Bell, right? No, the reality is, if you can't do it now, you won't do it then. There, there are Sundays that I'll go across the street, me and my son, or we'll go and get you know pizza, and I'll grab a couple extra pizza, and I'll drive around and just find the homeless and give them a slice of pizza. 
I'm not waiting to be rich to do that. Because if I'm rich, it's going to be even that much harder. See what I'm saying? And that's what he's saying here. When we look at this, if you look at this, amen, going down to what I'm trying to desire here to get you to relax. Turn around, tell somebody again. Relax. 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 Say with attitude. Relax. 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 <laughs> to not be so preoccupied with getting so that you can respond to God's giving. Come on, somebody. We're so preoccupied. I'm going to get this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to have this. That we're so preoccupied that we don't even see God giving this to us. Amen. Come on, somebody. It says, people who do not know God and the way he works fusses over these things. But you both know God and how he works. Speak, step your life in God reality, God initiative, and God provision. Don't worry about missing out. Come on, somebody. You'll find all your everyday human concern will be there. Come on, somebody. And that's what I mean. My dad says, hey man, don't you don't you don't you like miss out and not going into a restaurant? No. No, I don't miss out. Come on. You know? Go to the baseball game with, with Brother Mitchell. I'm not missing out. Come on. Why, right? Because God takes care of me in another way. Come on, somebody. You'll be blessed. You'll be blessed with paying $20 for a hot dog. Come on, somebody. <laughs> You'll be blessed. Come on. Now I'm going to stand in that line. Come on. Give your entire, verse 34 is just part of it. Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. Don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when time comes. That's the end of 34. People are getting all frantic about 2022, right? All frantic about the next election. All frantic about all these other things. We're just relax. Should be a new word for us. Relax. You go to work, the man. They start hounding you with mandates and everything. Relax, man. I've been telling that to people. Relax. Amen. I have a couple of kids, like I told you guys, I've been sharing with. I've been praying for some guys in the military. Just relax. And today we're already starting to see those those lawsuits, right? Federal judge in New York stopped the mandate in New York City. For mandatory vaccination. The military already signed the NCDAA. Can't dishonorably discharge somebody from the military for not getting the vaccine. If you trust God and know God's way, come on. We can tell people, relax, man. No, oh, I gotta go do this. Oh, I gotta relax. I'll tell you, men, I know women work, no disrespect to you, but women are smarter. Sorry, men. Women are smarter. They put their family first. Hey, man, I got a kid at home, man. I, I, gotta, I can't do that. Men will sell out. Come on. That's just all we are. We're one track line men. Men who work on Sundays, I tell them, man, you know what? You, you got to trust God, man. You, you got to trust God. When you're telling God that you cannot get done what you got done all six days of the week, man, and you've been some, something missing out in your life. You can say you're praying, but you're not. Right? Because if you say, I'm not being stingy with the seeds, then why are you stingy with the crops? Right? You, you, you see the actuality of it. And when men say, well, I'm, I got to go on. To, no, you don't. What you got to do is you got to give God first. You got to give God his time. You got to make God priority in your life. Come on, somebody. And I'm not afraid to say that. I know we've gotten away from that. And people say, oh, well, we can't get online. Uh, it's recorded. I can watch it when it's my time. That's fine. But it's not the same about putting God first. Yes. Amen? Imagine just talking to your wife over the phone. Come on. Imagine having a relationship just video conferencing. Come on. Imagine meeting your kids for the first time online and having to see them grow up that way. Not being able to hug them and, and, and caress them. Imagine them falling and cutting themselves, amen. I, I've seen women and men be confronted, especially moms, amen, who are working just as hard as every day, men out there working and trying to provide, and their kid falls, and they're having to deal with them with the babysitter going, oh my God, no, Mia, it's okay, you know, put a little bed in, let me break me over the phone, mama, let me do, oh, heal the goo goo, and go boy, whatever, and, and, you know, and that, that woman hangs up the phone, the first thing she says, I hate doing what I have to do, 
I hate being away from my kids. I hate not being able to be there for them. I remember because my wife did the same thing. When Joshua was born, she said, I just hate the fact that I'm going to have to go out here and have to work and labor. And she was smart. She knew how God worked. She said, you know what, buddy? That's your responsibility, dude. And I said, hey, man, I've been telling you to quit a whole long time ago. you just been stubborn, woman. Remember I told you how my wife was, right? My mom, my court, get off. Everything was a man hater, right? But the reality is, she, but she got it. She understood. She said, dude, it's your responsibility. I want to stay home with my kid. And she said, I quit. Just like that. She didn't plan it. She, she, you, she knew how God was going to work. And because she put God first over our children, man, God provided. And for all those years, he provided through just me. He met every need and then some, and then a little something, something on top of that. Come on, somebody. Because that's how God works, amen? So imagine if you don't want to be watching your kid get hurt and have a go-go or boo-boo, whatever you call it, right? And you always have to deal with over the phone. It'd be no different than you feel the same way with God. Come on, somebody. My kids are first. I want to be there with my kids. They're going to get their first tooth out. They're going to get their first shots. They're going to go to school for the first time. Imagine having to walk your kid through the school via Zoom. Now, we know that that's been a reality, right? Birthdays. Drive-by birthdays. And man, everyone's like, oh, drive-by birthday. Good, it's all good. You don't have to clean up after them. Come on, somebody. You don't have to make food for them. Come on, right? And God talks about hospitality. The pandemic is going to be over. And we're like, what's this drive-by? They don't want you at their house. Just drive-by. Hey, thank you for the gift. Bye-bye. See you later. Let's go inside. See, the enemy works to feel into our desires. We don't like people. I'll be the first one. I don't like people. And if I could spend my whole life alone, I'd be up in the mountains on a treetop looking for my game. And not having to talk to nobody. But God said, no, I want you to marry somebody. Oh, my God. There goes a ball and chain. My God, you got to understand this. I was the last one in my family to get married. The last one in the family to have a child. And all these other things to get hooked up. I'm like, dude, I'm never going to get married, man. I don't like people. Don't touch me. Ugh. My wife goes, I go, no, don't. Don't touch me. But when I trusted God, I fell in love. Come on, somebody. And I understood what he wanted to do. And I said, okay, I'm going to die to myself, God. And when I said that and I returned home from the military, man, he blessed me with a beautiful wife. He blessed me with an awesome family. And then he called me, had he been calling me since eight years old. And then he appointed me and anointed me. And today I just can't go without seeing you guys on Sunday. I know I got my good days and bad days. And there are days, amen, that I'm struggling. Like I said, it just seems like yesterday that I lost my wife. But some days, amen, I just, man, I just, I, I, I just, I just don't want to. Then you'll see a text from me. Hey, how you doing? The Lord's time to die yourself. Die yourself. You know you love that person. You know you're, you're caring about how their day goes. You know you're, you love them as a shepherd. You want to see them blessed today. Just send them that text. Come on, somebody. See how they're doing. Come on, it's not about you, right? I know you're going through it. I know there's dark moments. But you can't shadow the love that I gave you for my people. There I am. He did call back. I called the pastor. Said, "Can I call him sick?" He said, "Sure, go for it." I called God. Said, "Can I call him sick?" He goes, "You can do whatever you want." He just said it in the scripture. He said, "In Second Corinthians, take your time, take your time." Right? Remember? What do you say? He says, "I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over." See that? I don't think I can tie that with that. I want each of you to take plenty of time and think it over and make up your own mind. What you will do. He texts me. I called him sick. He's not answering. Oh, well, he's got a whole bunch of sick hours, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't called him sick like, what, four or five times in 20 years. You got all this time. Take a one, take a week off. But he 
take that time. Did I respond to you, Brother Steve? No. Took all the time. But I had to make up my own mind. I had to determine what I was going to give to God today. And as I look backwards, remember how far he brought me? Nothing. I got in. I moved those three chairs. I took that chair off that, that, that table myself. Moved them all into the back. It was like nothing. It's nothing. It's all like E-Man. Because God gave me the ability to do what I need to do. Why? Because I made the determination of what I was going to do. You know what I was going to give Steve? I was going to give him God. Amen? Let's pray. Father, maybe we're here today. And maybe there'll be somebody on that video that'll be watching it. They'll say, you know what? God did it. I have took me plenty of time to think about what I'm going to do. I only share my own experience because it's a true story. It's the reality of how my flesh is no different than anybody else. I wanted to call in sick. My flesh didn't want to go. My flesh didn't want to do. But like 2 Corinthians said, in verse 9, I took enough time. And I considered, and it was up to my own. I had to make up my own mind, not, not somebody else's mind, not my son's mind, my wife's mind, uh, my neighbor's mind, nobody. I had to make up my mind for myself. I said, God, I'm going to make up my own mind what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you all because you would never cut me short or deprive me of giving you all. So, beloved, I pray this morning. And when you think about it later on today or before you go to bed or when you wake up tomorrow, when you think about what God has done for you and done through you and done upon you over your life, take plenty of time to think it through and make up your own mind for what you will give God. Will you give God today, next week, maybe tomorrow, maybe just a 30-minute time every day to say, God, I want to pray for somebody. I'm going to text somebody today. I'm going to call somebody today and just say, hey, is there something I can pray for you? It's like this morning, God, I, I had that time. And I'm glad. I'm honored. I'm privileged and humbled to be able to give you all. Thank you, Heavenly Father, as we pray this day. Thank you for your message. Thank you for the opportunity for us to make that same decision. And when this week comes and unfolds, We'll be able to look back how you got us through last week and trust you, God, because we gave you first priority today. You're going to see us through the rest of the week. And we give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.